Let us pray. Dear God who is in heaven, we come before you this morning. May you bless each and every thing that you are going to do in this lesson. May you bless each and everyone who has managed to partake in this lesson, in this service. May you even bless me as I am going to present the Sabbath. Let your Holy Spirit guide us in each and everything that you are going to do. We pray for those who are going to join in. We have been praying for those who did not manage to join in. These are humble prayer in Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Sabbath, once again. Uh, today we are going to, to look at Leviticus chapter 26. To some of us, this is going to be a revision. It's not something new, but it is very important for us to look uh, at this chapter because it plays a pivotal role, especially in this movement. So before we start uh, our topic, we are going to start by reading a quotation from Ellen White. Check here. Simba, could you write it on the board for us as well, please? Of course, I will. The quote, yeah. Thank you. Uh, let us go to Testimonies, Volume 9, 10.3. 9, 10.3. This is our topic, Leviticus, chapter 26. Can you see? Can someone confirm, please? No, we can't see that. Oh, we can see it now that you put it up. What about now? Yes, we can see that. Thank you. Right, I said 90. 90. 10.3. Can someone go there and read it for us, please? Is it we have nothing to fear that one, Simba? Simba? I don't know if you can hear me. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yes, we have nothing yes. to fear. Yeah, we have nothing to fear for the future, except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teaching in our past history. Thank, thank you very much. So this is the reason why I decided to look at Leviticus chapter 26. In the past, God had led us all the teachings that we are going to present now it is emanating from the studies that we did in the past so we are not supposed to fear for the future why because we should go back to the previous lessons that we did in the past because god was leading us so if we go back to those studies we have this assurance that our future is bright and we have hope in the future and we have hope for the lessons that we are having now and the events that are taking place right now they are not supposed to come to us as a surprise why because we have nothing to fear for the what for the future because god did it led us in the past so this is the reason why we are looking at Leviticus chapter 26 so in today's study most of our time we are going to draw much in the bible we are trying to understand the immediate context of Leviticus chapter 26 and how do we approach Leviticus chapter 26 as a movement? So let us open our Bibles on Leviticus chapter 26. Leviticus chapter 26. And I need someone to read from verse 1 up to 2. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 1 to 2. Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 1 to 2. Sorry, Simba, that first reference isn't 90, 10.3, is it? I can't find it. I don't know if anyone else has got that. I could have found it. Yes, I found it. I read it out. Did you? Oh, it yeah. must be the Ellen White, my Ellen White app. Sorry. Okay. 
Okay, I can read for you the Leviticus 26, 1 yeah. to 2. From this 1 to 2. Mm -hmm. You shall make you no idols, no graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it. For I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Thank you. Thank you very much. So from this one to this two, we are having God giving commandments to, to the to the Israelites. So this one and two, what only God is doing is giving statues to the Israelites, expecting them to obey what he wants. So from this one in this two, God is giving commandments to Israelites. This is what we have from verse 1 and verse 2. Without wasting much of our time, let us move on to verse 3 up to verse 12. From verse 3 up to verse 12. And we'll comment on that. I'll give you the time to comment. From verse 3 to verse 12, can someone read it for me, please? Or I'll just choose for the sake of time. Deborah, can you read it, please? From verse 3 to verse 12. Who did you ask for, to do that? Yeah. From verse 3 to 12, Deborah. Oh, Deborah. It's Deborah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I'll give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time. And ye shall eat your bread to the full, and dwell in your land safely. And I will give you peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. And five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. For I have respect unto you, and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store, and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you, and will be with, your God, be with you, your God, and ye shall be my people. Thank you very much, Jebra. Right, what are we seeing from verse 3 to verse 12? Let us discuss from verse 3 to 12. From verse 3 to 12. Leon, what do you think? What are you seeing from verse 3 to 12? Leon, Leon James. All right. What you are seeing from verse 3 to verse 12, God is giving the statues and God is promising to, to bless the Israelites in the event that they have obeyed his commandments. In the event that they did not obey those commandments, God is not going to bless the Israel. He's not going to bless them. So in order for them to be blessed by God, they are supposed to obey and keep God's commandments. Is that clear from verse 3 to 12? Yes. But if you look at verse 12, verse 12, it summarizes the information that we have from 
that is from verse 3 to 11. Verse 12 is now summarizing. Because verse 12 is saying, And I will walk among you, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people. So if you look at verse 12, verse 12 is trying to summarize what we have from verse 3 up to verse 11. This is what we have from verse 3 to 12. Verse 12 summarizing the part of three, from 3 to 11. All right? Hello. I'm sorry, Simba. Um, Simba? Yes, I can hear uh, you. Good, good is they put in the chat, the promises God will do for the Israelites if they keep God's commandments uh, that they gave in verse 1 and 2. So, yeah, Kurtis did comment it on this well before, yeah. Exactly. So, what you are saying, there is a condition that God is giving. If you do this, I'll do this, right? I will bless you in the event that you have managed to keep my statutes. You have obeyed me. If you obey me, if you obey me, I will be your God and you will be my people. That is the condition that God is giving to, 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 to the Israelites, right? Right. So before we jump to, to verse 18, I want to introduce uh, another concept that we have that is going to help us as we are going to through our chapter uh, of Leviticus chapter 26. All right. Mm, we have what we call hard captivity and soft captivity, right? We have what we call hard captivity and soft captivity. Can someone define what do I mean if I say Hard captivity, especially in the context of the Israelites. What do we mean? What do I mean by saying hard captivity? Hard captivity. Hi, Simba. Hello, is this blessing? Yes, blessing here. Yeah, it's fine. Thank you. Well, um, my understanding of hard captivity is. Uh, a a permanent punishment, a punishment in which there is no reversal. So in order to explain what I mean, is it okay for me to compare it with soft captivity? It's fine. It's okay. Go on. Okay, yeah. yeah but the soft captivity, it seems in Leviticus, is speaking about a punishment where it can be reversed. So if a punishment would come upon them and they change their ways, then it could be cut short. But then with the hard captivity, with the, yeah, hard captivity, I think, they have to go through the entire duration of the captivity. There's no cutting it short. There's no reversal. So, so you're saying on soft captivity, they, there is a chance of a reverse, right? Yes. Then with hard, there's no chance of reverse, right? Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Someone else? Thank you. Blessing. <clears throat> Emma? What do you think? Simba, sorry. Kurt is asking in the chat. He can't speak just now. So he's asking, can you give, give examples? I'm not sure I fully understand the distinction. All right, it's fine. It's fine. All right, let me do it this way. I, I'm not dispute. I'm not disputing what blessing said. So hard captivity is if we are talking in the context of the Israelites, we are saying hard captivity. Hard captivity. This is when. The this is when the this is when the enemy 
This is when the enemy took Israelites took Israelites out of their country, out of their country, and oppressed them. So hard captivity is when the enemy took the Israelites out of their country and oppressed them. So with hard captivity, we are saying they are being oppressed when they are not in their country, right? So now, what about soft, soft captivity? By deduction based from the definition that we have, by comparing hard and soft, sorry, I wanted to ask you something. I wanted to take you back just a little bit. All right. Um, you're talking about hard and soft captivity. I just wanted to know where we're getting that concept from before we understand what they are. Maybe I'm, I'm a bit lost. If we just let's explain to me where we are getting the concept of hard captivity and soft captivity from. Is it possible for, for you to be patient enough so that maybe I'll, I'll be in a better position to, to, to explain exactly where we are trying, what I'm trying to, 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 to build? All right, that's okay. Thank you. All right. I was saying, Crispin? All right. Hello, Zimba. Yes, Crispin? Uh, I was saying, uh, can you just maybe make your board to be a, a bit clear? Oh, it's not visible. What yeah, about the yeah, I think it's better now, the reflection of the sun or oh, the oh, lights. Oh, right, fine. Let me close the curtains, please, sorry. <laughs> okay. What about now? I think that's better now. Um, Simba, are you saying yeah. that, like, you know, when they were under captivity in Rome, um, with those conditions that they were under captivity, um, a lot better than the one in Egypt? Because they were in their own country. I didn't hear you, you Sidri. Um, you know, uh, when they were under captivity in Rome. All right. And um, I'm just comparing. All were right. Were they a lot better because they were in their own country then? They were in Israel then. And um, when they were taken to Egypt, it was probably worse because they were not in their country. All right. Yeah, 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 almost close to, 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 to the answer, especially on soft captivity. That is a very good hint that you gave, uh, Sidri. So, what is soft captiv captivity now? Uh, being under control, but not, um, I, I, I think you could practice your own religion and you could. But there were there were laws in place to that you had to obey. All right, thank you. Hello, Is this Marshall? Yes. Yes, Marshall, go on. Um, I think from what you uh, what you wrote on the board, hard captivity involves the children of Israel being taken out of uh, their land and being persecuted or oppressed in a foreign land however soft then if you compare that with soft captivity i'm thinking um they'll be persecuted but maybe in their land 
Okay. I mean, that is the point. So by comparing like what Marshall is saying, had captivity, they are being oppressed by the enemy when they are not in their country. But with soft now, with now soft captivity, they are now being oppressed when they are in their country. They are still in their land. But the enemy is still at, is still oppressing them. That is the idea. Thank you, Masha. Now no, let's just move. On. Yes. Sorry. Uh, before you move on, so okay, you are going to give examples. Because I was just now wondering about, you know, you have the Roman captivity and then you also have the, the Egyptian captivity. Uh, with the Egyptian captivity, they were actually taken out of their own country. But with the Roman captivity, we do compare them, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So I was just wondering if that's an example of them being in soft captivity like in the with the roman empire but with the egyptian empire they are in hard captivity so i was just wondering how that works out between the soft and the hard because in my mind i guess i thought it was similar all right thank you very much uh, i think we uh we are we are going there we are going there then i have charity are you the one with that end which is up or is blessing Oh, it was me. Sorry. Let me oh, know. It's fine. Ah, it's fine. It's okay. All right. Now, be, be patient with me, Cherish. Now, let us move on to verse. Let us move on to verse. Verse 13. Uh, Natalie, can you read verse 13 for me, please? Can you hear me? Natalia? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bond, bondmen. And I have broken the bands of, the, of your yoke and made you go upright. Thank you, Natalie. What are we seeing in verse 13? Verse 1 to 2. God is giving commandments, right? Then from verse 3 to 12, God is telling the Israelites that if you obey me, I'm going to bless you, right? Now, on verse 18, God is giving a flashback. God is retaining these people to Egypt, right? On verse 18, right? So on verse 18, what type of captivity are we seeing in verse 18 based on the definitions that we have of hard captivity and soft, capti and soft captivity? In a play, Bonman. Hello? Is this Najali? No. Enslaved. I can't hear. I can't hear you, Natalie. Sorry. She said, "Enslaved, they bond men." The, the bond men enslaved, right? Mm. Bond men and enslaved, and they are being enslaved in Egypt, right? But they, but they not bond men. God doesn't see them that way. He All right. that you Somebody should not be their bondmen. That they should not be their bondmen? Yeah, you should not be their slaves then. But remember, God is the one who is saying, I, I am the Lord your God, which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt, that you should not be their bondmen. Many yeah. people say when they were in Egypt, they were bondmen. And, the, and, and, God is, and and here God is saying, and I have broken the 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 the, the, the bands of your yoke and made you go upright, right? Mm -hmm. You need to say God is remind God is reminding them 
that remember you were slaves in Egypt, right? Yeah. You were in captivity in Egypt. <laughs> and one who brought you out of that land. So the point that I want to drive home is when we are on verse 18, God is taking back the Israelites to Egypt. He is trying to re to to tell them that he is the one who brought them out of the land of Egypt. When they were in Egypt, they were being they were being uh, pe uh, persecuted. They were being treated unfairly. They were slaves in Egypt. That was a hard captivity that they were going through when they were in Egypt. So, verse 13 now, God is showing them that he loves them, he cares for them. So, in each and everything that the Israelites are supposed to do, they are not supposed to forget that God is the one who delivered them from the oppressed end of what? Of Egypt. That is verse 13. Let me go to the charts there, so many. And this question seems like hard. Right, uh, Ketis, where they were brought out of Egypt, where they were brought out of Egypt, all right, it's fine. Anyone else to comment before I move on? Yeah, Simba. Yes, Ketis. Uh, the, I was just re referring to when Charity asked um, between Roman captivity and Egyptian, uh, and it seems based on your definitions of hard captivity, um, then this <clears throat> verse 13 is making reference to Egypt being a hard captivity. Oh, thank you very much. All right, someone else before we move on? So in, on verse 18, we are experiencing, this is a hard captivity on verse 18. This is hard captivity that we have on verse 18. This is hard captivity. This is hard captivity. Let us now move on from verse 18 to verse 14. So can someone read from verse 14 to 17? From verse 14 to 17? From verse 14 to 17, let me look for someone. Mm. Susan? From verse 14 to 17, Susan? Sorry, where did you say reading from? From 14 to 17. In where, I'm sorry. Leviticus chapter 26. Twenty first, I apologize. Which twenty six, verse fourteen to seventeen, Susan. What first, sorry. Fourteen. Fourteen to seventeen. All right, let me put it on the board. You want me to read it? Okay, are you hearing me? Yeah. But if ye will not hearken unto me, and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor my judgment, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumptions, and the burning ague, I think, that mm -hmm. shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. And ye shall sorrow. Your, 
and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. And I will set my face against you, and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They shall hate you. They shall hate you. Shall they that hate you shall reign over you, and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Thank you very Verse much, Susan. Okay. No, ends there. Right. Uh, can someone see what is taking place when we started from Leviticus chapter 26, verse 1 to 13, right? Then from 14 to 17, there is a change of events that is taking place. Can someone try to, to, to show us and tell us what is taking place there from 14 to 17 and distinguish it with from verse 1 to 13? Blessings for obeying and non um, curses for disobeying, or the cause and effect, basically, for not obeying. Exactly. So from verse 1 to 12, we have a cause and effect obeying blessings, right? Then from verse 14 to 17, disobey, then curses, right? So if we are to look in the immediate context of Leviticus chapter 26, can someone tell me what time is being prophesied here by Moses from 14 to 17? Seven in the immediate context of Leviticus chapter 26. You're on about the 25, 27 time. No, 25, 20. Sorry, Natalia, I can't hear you. What was the question? Oh, I'm, I'm asking, what is the immediate context of Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 14 to 17? What time is being referred to by Moses from verse 14 to 17? I can't hear. Is the question clear or it's not? Uh, it's clear, but she can't hear you. Oh, it's fine. So the question to the class, can someone give me an answer or I just choose? Richard? The power of the government will be broken. It's like the prophecy in Isaiah will come to pass and Manasseh's power will be broken. So the start of where they will they'll be scattered all right and other nations will reign over them oh th thank you thank you thank you richard thank you thank you someone else uh, um ignatius Hello, yes, Simba. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still thinking, but I think this could be the time of uh, the, the judges during the Why? time of the judges. You, you, Why? I say so because of the description that's given there. That um, you break my on verse sixteen. I also will do this to you. I will even appoint over you terror, consu consumption, wow. and the burning air that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart. Then you shall sow your seed in a vein, for your enemies shall eat it. Uh, so during that time, and, you shall, and, I was, and I will set my face against you, you shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you, and you shall flee when no one pursues you. So during the time of the of, of, of the judges, the many enemies 
surrounding Israel would come and you know um, uh, come and consume their land, fight them, and they destroy their harvest and destroy. They, they consume all their, they destroy everything, then they go away. So I'm just thinking that this part of scripture was actually fulfilled during the time of, of the judges. Thank you very much. It's clear, because if we look uh, from what he's saying, from verse 14 to 17, the Israelites are being oppressed by the by the enemies when they are in their country they are still in their country but still the enemies they are still coming and oppressing them number one number two remember in the time of the judges they broke a covenant with god remember they asked for another king they said we want to have king like other nations they forgot that their king was god so they had to look for another king like what other nations, like what other surrounding nations are doing. So by so doing, God had to repent, to change the way he does these things by suiting them, by giving into what they wanted. So God had to give in to what they want. So they broke their covenant with God. So when they broke their covenant with God, they were left with no option except to succumb to the cases that was going to be poured upon them. But this was taking place when they were still in their land. So this is the reason why maybe it's now coming clear, especially to charity. This is the reason why when I introduced the concept of hard captivity and soft captivity, it's now helping us to be able to understand the way God dealt with Israelites when they disobeyed him. So in this scenario, it's a soft captivity. Why? Because they are still in their land. They disobeyed God, but God is punishing them when they are still in their heart, in their land. The enemies are coming to them while they are still in their land and oppressing them. Like what is being, like what is being, said by, by Ignatius. That is the narrative that we have from verse 14 to, to 17. Uh, Cherit, is that clear? <clears throat> is it making sense now to you? You mean the, the first question I asked about where we get the concept of hard and soft? Exactly. Uh, not really, but you can continue. Maybe I'll get it along the way. All right, it's fine. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, let us move on to. So we are saying verse fourteen. Let me put it on the board. Be patient. Let me put it on the board. Then. Uh, I have Katie's. Katie's. Is it a question? I'm sorry, I don't follow. Please be patient with me. Where in the verse does it say they stay in their country? Can someone come in? Where in the verse does they say in their country? Uh, I think I can, Melania, you can respond here. Yeah? yeah, you have to unmute, please. Okay. Um, I think if you go back to Leviticus, 26 verse 17 uh, where it says I will set my face against you and you shall be slain before your enemies they that hate you shall reign over you and you shall flee when none persuade you from this verse we can get that those people they are being reigned over in their own land not in a foreign land uh, because it's saying they shall reign over you so and these people will be trying to flee so they are in their own country it's not explicit explicitly like given that they're in their country but if you read by deduction you can see that these people are being 
uh, reigned over in their own country. That's my thinking. I was going to add to that. You know, it doesn't. It, hi, Simba. It doesn't say that they got. It doesn't say they got taken anywhere. It says they'll sow their seed, which implies they're on their own land. I think to me, and that the enemies will take the food, and then they want to flee when someone comes. They'll even start running when they hear someone coming. It it seems to imply that definitely they're still in their land. And when he said it's judges, I think we know Gideon is in a time of famine, which seems to fit that picture that people are coming to take their food, and he's threshing the wheat in a private corner in the vine press because he doesn't want anyone to see him doing that because the, the food is so scarce so i think that fits in with the picture that there's famine sent to them i don't know if we've got an illustration of disease in the judge's history because this seems to say disease will come famine will come and people will come and reign over you but, but it all seems to me to imply they're in their own land yeah uh, to add on that emma can you flee uh an enemy when you are not in your country I guess you could try and get away from the captivity land, like you could try and flee Egypt, but but it doesn't it doesn't make as much sense as fleeing in your own land to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, it's fine. Uh, Katie's responded. Thanks, Melanie and Emma. Thank you, Katie's. Let us move on for the sake of my time. Let us move on to verse 18. Verse 18. Uh, verse 18 in French. Hello. Yeah. This eighteen and twenty. This eighteen and twenty. Magda, can you read this eighteen and twenty? From this eighteen to twenty. Was it me? Yeah, Magda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power, and I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass, and your strength shall be spent in vain, for your land shall not yield her increase, neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruits. Thank you very much. From verse 18 to 20, we, we have an aspect of the seven times. This is a punishment that God is giving to the Israelites if they disobey him. Now, God is saying, I'll break the pride of your power and I'll make you heaven as iron and your earth as brass and your strength shall be spent in vain for your land shall not yield their increase neither shall the trees of the land yield their fruit. Um, can someone tell, tell us the immediate context of this part from verse 18 to 20? What time is being referred to by Moses? Marshall? <clears throat> Sorry, Simba, I was distracted. Can you come again? All right. Uh, I was asking about the immediate context of this from this 18 to this 20 uh immediate context do you mean the history what, what do you mean sorry so sorry, the history the history exactly the history okay um what time, what, what time is being referred to by moses um Okay, let me, let this pass. I'll, I'll I'll answer another question. Sorry. It's fine. It's okay. No worries. Thank you. Uh, it's fine. Uh, oh yes. Yokai. Yokai. Yeah. Hello, yo. All right, I'll give it to Andres. Andres. 
Yeah. Um, wh what is the ask? Sorry. Oh, I'm asking about the time uh, from verse 18 to 20. What time is being referred to by Moses from verse 18 to 20? Um, what what time in like when was it applied later? Yes, in the history of the Israelites. History. Okay. Mm. Um. Or someone can just come in and uh, assist him as well. It's, is is that the twenty five twenty that Natalie had said earlier? Twenty five twenty. Uh, that is not the answer that I am oh. looking for. Okay. Hi, Simba. Hello. All right, Hi, who is this? All right, Ignatius. Ignatius. Yep. I I think maybe this should be the time of uh, Babylonian captivity. Um, when they're but they're saying that I will break the pride of your power, and we know that the pride of a nation's power is their king. So uh, this is the time that the their king was actually, you know, um, taken off and they were conquered. They no longer have a king, meaning somebody else is now ruling them. They are reporting to someone else who is not their king, um, becoming a satellite, you know, a satellite state, a, just a, a, a little region. So I, I think this should be uh, definitely talking about the Babylonian captivity. Thank so you, Ignatius. Are you talking about uh, the time of Manasseh, when Manasseh was taken to to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar? Uh, no, it's not Nebuchadnezzar, sorry. <laughs> but Manasseh, yes. <laughs> Is that the way you're speaking about it? All right, Ign uh, Ignatius, you were talking about Babylonian captivity. Which one were you referring to? Maybe that is the question which is being asked by charity, isn't it? Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Should be the first, the first Babylonian captivity. Or oh, the first Babylonian captivity. Ah, ah well, I'm not sure. The only. All right. Oh, it's fine. Sure. Charity, Charity, can you explain that? Okay, so uh, with the with that seventy year captivity, isn't we mark uh, seven kings, if I'm not mistaken, and we would usually mark Manasseh as the the king who fulfilled the prophecy written in Leviticus 26, 19, where the pride of their power is broken. And we know that the pride of the power is based of a, the power of a nation is a king, right? And then this is where Manasseh is basically taken to captivity. So I was wondering if that's what you were talking about or you wanted. All right. Thank you very much. That is the, the answer that I was looking for. That is correct. That is correct. That is the time when Manasseh was taken uh, into captivity by the uh, by the Assyrian. I think, for reference sake, let me put it down for verse eighteen and twenty. All right, be patient with me. So, in verse eighteen, it says, "I will punish you seven times more for your sins." Yeah. So, is that the same thing you're talking about now, Manasseh? Exactly, yeah. On, on, on from verse 18 and 20, that, that is the time of Manasseh when he was taken captive in Assyria. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah, a lot more. Thank you. Natalie, uh, Charles, 677. That is not the answer I'm looking for. Yeah, that is the, that is not the answer I'm looking for for the meantime. Thank you, Natalie. All right. So let me just Israel under King C. Hi, Simba. Yes. Can I add something to that as well? It's fine. Um, I just wanted to bring in the context of how 
if we remember that the Israelite nation was broken into the north and the south, right? And no. during this time when all of these things are being said, that hasn't happened yet, right? So no. when it also speaks about the issue of the, the pride of the power being broken, mm -hmm. um, it was also referring to both the south and the north. With the south, you have Manasseh, but uh, with the north, you have Hoshia. So this also takes us back to the time that the pride of the power of, of the north is broken. So in this case, it will just be brought together as one nation, the north and the south. But we know that when we are marking Hoshea, we are beginning that uh, 2520. And then when we are marking Manasseh as well, we are beginning uh, the 2520 for the south. So the breaking of the pride of their power is is, is referring to that initial uh, start of that 2520 with both the kings Hoshea and Manasseh. All right. Thank you. Mm, thank you for the contribution. Uh, for the sake of time, Magda, what time am I supposed to finish? I'm actually not sure, Emma. Sorry. You've got till 12 o'clock. We often go an hour and a quarter, an hour and a half. It's up to you. Oh, so you've got you another so half hour if you want. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Let me check you. Let me try to I'm just all right. Uh, let me take this opportunity to just summarize the the, the 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 information that we have discussed so far. We we started from verse one to twelve. We started from verse one and two. We said those are the commandments that God is giving. Then from verse from verse three up to verse twelve, these are the blessings that God is going to to pour upon Israel in the event that they obeyed God. But on verse thirteen, we managed to identify that God is taking them back to Egypt, whereby He is reminding them, "Remember, I'm the I'm, the, I'm your God." I'm the one who brought you out of the land of, of Egypt, where we managed to identify the aspect of heart captivity, because that was the operation which was taking place when they were in Egypt, right? That is verse 13 Israel captivity in Egypt. Then from verse 14 to 17, we managed to see that Israel captivity during judges, during the time of the judges. During the time of the judges, they were in captive, but they were in their heart, in their land, which is soft what? Soft captivity. So when Israel was restored here, they disobeyed God and ended up in this condition of soft captivity. Because of the love of God, God had to repent because they cried for another king, right? During this time, this is from verse 14 to 17. Now, Israel now is under kings which is the part that you are looking at, where we are starting to see the commencement of the seven times. The seven times that we managed to identify, like what Ignatius and Cherry says, we are starting with what? With, Neb with, with, with Manasseh being taken to captivity by Assyria. That is the first aspect of the what? Of the seven times that we watch, that we have, which is what I'm going to put here. Right? This is from verse 18 to 20. Manasseh. Ah, this is our first seven times. All right. Is it clear so far? Can someone confirm? Yes. It is. Well, there are uh, comments in the chat. So Andrea says All it's right. interesting. Me... So, uh, do you want to read it yourself? You can read it, Go on. It's fine. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So it's interesting to note that when this was written, they didn't have a king. 
and it wasn't God's plan that they have won. So even if later on the pride of their power came to be their king, initially this wasn't necessary, necessarily king, just a thought. And then Marshall replied, it's an interesting thought because their king was God and a human king would only come when they reject being led by God. Thank you very much. Thank you for the contributions, Andres and Marshall. Thank you, Magda. Let us move on. So, what we are now saying, what we are now going to do, we are going to move on to verse, that is verse 21 and 22. Then, uh, Emma, can you read verse 21 and 22? <clears throat> Yes, Leviticus 26, uh, 21, just come somewhere else. And if ye walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then Oh, do you want to stop there? Sorry. Uh, from verse 1 to 22 only. 21 and 22. 22. Sorry, I did 23. Yeah, 22. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll ask you, Richard. Richard, 21 and 22, what is this time? The second seven times is referring to which, to which period? You just ask what period those verses were applicable to. Yeah. Or well, someone can come and assist him. Is that, is that, so is that the start? So from 742? Um, or someone else can say it. I've no got one. some dates. Yeah, Blessing someone can tell me. Blessing? <clears throat> Hi, Simba. Could you, yes. could you please just repeat your question so that I make sure I answer appropriately? Right. Well, I'm asking, remember, from verse 18 to 20, we managed to identify this is the taken captive by, by the Assyrians, right? So okay. now, on the second seven times, I'm now asking what period is this? Okay. Um, I think it's it's round about the time of Nebuchadnezzar. Um, so when Nebuchadnezzar is rising to power and particularly this prophecy of world peace that's, sorry, sorry, just just one moment. It talks about wild beasts taking children. I think this this happened in the time of uh, King Jehoiakim, particularly, because um, during that time there were different nations that uh, were attacking Israel and their children were taken away from them and went into captivity. Thank you very much, Blessing. That is the answer that I'm looking for. So, all right. Can I ask you a rhetoric question again, Blessing? Why did you say it is that time of Joachim? What clue do we have in the verse? Okay. Uh, yeah. For me, it was verse 22. All right. Why? Uh, verse 22 yeah. speaks of wild beasts coming yeah. to rob uh, Israel of their children. And particularly in the time of Jehoiakim, we're told that there's royal children, but others children as well, but particularly the royal children are said to have been taken away. And in terms of beasts, um, I, I don't think it was literal beasts per se when it happened. But in the time of Jehoiakim, Kim, Kim wasn't, the, Israel wasn't just attacked by a single nation, but there were multiple nations that 
came against them. So that that's why I said it at least. <laughs> I think another clue we can look at by saying we can look at the Daniel seven beast, wild beast. We can refer to Babylon. Yes, yes, I agree. We can we can we can refer to to, to, to Babylon. So this is Timber? the time. Yes. So uh, is this um in 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 connection with the issue of children being taken into captivity? We can also refer to to Daniel. If you remember when Daniel starts the the book of Daniel, he speaks about the time that he was taken into captivity, which was in the third year of the king Jehoiakim, if I'm not mistaken. Which yeah. is Daniel chapter one from verse one yes. to two. Yes. Exactly. So that, that is the that is the that is the period that we are looking for. That, that, that is the period that we have our second seven what seven times. Another interesting uh, thing that I want us to see is we have had captivity, soft captivity. But when you look at the seven times, first seven times, second seven times, we are starting. This is another the commencement of what of Hard captivity. Did you notice that? Because if you look here, they are not in their land, and uh, in this seven seven times again, they are not in their heart, in their land. So the situation is getting tense on each and every stage because they are keep on disobeying what they are keep on disobeying God. Let us move on from verse 22 to uh, verse Simba. 23. But before I go, let me ask, is it clear? Uh, Simba, I have a question. Yes, uh, it is. <clears throat> um, I noticed that uh, increase in intensity from starting off as soft. But where you marked Manasseh, um, I, I may be mistaken. Please, can you correct me? It's One of the kings, I think it was Manasseh might not have been was taken captive but the israelites remained in their land i don't know if it was manasseh was it manasseh one of the kings was taken stayed in babylon but the israelites remained in their land what would you consider that a soft or a hard captivity if it's happening to the king but not the rest of israel all right uh, can we go to second chronicles chapter 33 verse 11 Mm -hmm. Second Chronicles, what sorry? Second Chronicles chapter thirty three, verse eleven. Second Chronicles thirty three verse eleven. Right, I, I, I'm there. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Israel, of oh, sorry, of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns. And bound, bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. Oh, that is not the one. Let us go to SS201.1. SS201.1. Sorry. SS201.1. Let me open my Easter here. Yeah. Okay, were you trying to find the verse where it says he's taken back again? Yeah, and. Because it has a couple and, of verses and after the, that. Because it says he's taken there, but then two verses later it says he's taken back to Jerusalem. In verse 13, so because he says, I don't know if that's what you wanted. <laughs> and uh, this one he says, and the Israelites did not depend, only Manasseh dependent. Ah, uh, okay, okay. No, it doesn't say that really. It just says he prayed unto him, he was entreated of him and heard his supplication and brought him again to Jerusalem into his kingdom. So we know that he repented and was taken back to Jerusalem. Oh, this is fine. That's that's thirteen. Well, someone can comment or can uh, uh, answer if he has got an answer to the question which is being asked by Ketis.
Hi Simba. Yes, Masha. Um I as much as we see the king being uh, taken into captivity um and the king being the pride of their power i believe the king the king being captive is symbolic of um what would then happen to the people because um, this is a representative of uh, of the nation so if the representative of the nation is in captivity you can you can imply that the nation is in captivity even if there is no direct punishment on the nation but uh, the head of the nation i don't know if that makes sense exactly exactly it makes sense someone else can come in yes uh simba um my thoughts are when um a nation is got down from being a nation to become just a satellite nation, a region that's paying um, tribute or taxes to the nation that's in charge of them. It means that nation, that war nation, is now in, in captivity. You see now. So when Manasse, according to my understanding, when Manasse was taken into captivity, it means Israel is now in captivity as a nation. Whereas during the time of the judges, Israel was still doing its self-governance. It was uh, governing itself. Then enemies uh, would just come, they attack them, they go back, right? But it still maintained its self-governance. Whereas when the king is no longer there, nobody is governing them anymore. They are just a sort of state. So that's, that's my take. That's how I see it. All right. So, thank you, Masha and the Ignatius. So, to add on, based on this quotation, which is saying, faithfully the prophet spoke to Manasseh and his people, but backsliding Judah would not yield. As the earnest of what would be for the people, should they continue impenitent, the Lord permitted their king to be captured by Assyrian soldiers who bound him with fetters and carried him to Babylon. This affliction brought the king to his senses. He humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem into his, into his king. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord, he was God. So the point I wanted to point out, like what Ignatius and Masha have alluded to, I wanted to say, when Israel committed a sin to God, Manasseh is the one who is being taken to captivity, but some were not taken to captivity. So in other words, Manasseh was representing the war of Israel in, in Assyria. It's very unfortunate that he, he managed to repent, but like what the quotation is saying, the Israelites were not forgiven by God but only man has managed to do that. So we can argue that it could be hard captivity in the sense that the king was representing his nation. I don't know if it makes sense, Katie. Yeah, because, because the punishment that God is giving, he is not giving the punishment uh, to the king when he is still in his country. He was not in his country. He was in a foreign land. Simba, mm -hmm. can I yes. can I comment? It's okay. Yes, you. Okay, so there's something I'm noticing. I I I've been in and off, but there's something I'm noticing that. Um, remember when when that the the verse we talked about the beast taking the children to captivity. It was not all children that went. It was some children, maybe the royal children. And we called it hard captivity. It was hard captivity. All right. And this time it's Manasseh who's going and it's hard captivity. So maybe the definition for it to be better understood, hard captivity does not necessarily have to imply that every person of Israel is going to captivity. But if it is 
a portion of Israel that is going to cause damage because when a king goes, it, it's detrimental. When those royal children went, it was detrimental to Israel. It, yeah, I think then it becomes hard captivity. So maybe we'll, the confusion that's coming in is how is it hard captivity when the rest of Israel is is still there, but only one person has gone. But also the children that were taken uh, in Joachim's time, uh, Daniel and his fellows, the, it was not all the children of Israel that were taken, but it exactly. was a person. Exactly. Th thank you. It's an interesting thought that you, you brought here. Thank you very much. Hi, Simba. Hello. Cherit, oh, one moment, please. I, I'm off <laughs> my time now. Please, sorry. Hello. Allow me to just finish these seven times. Then maybe we can discuss later, isn't it? All right, that's fine. Thank you. Right. Let's move on to... We are now moving on to this 23 up to 26. Let me look for someone who has never said anything. Shamis already gave an excuse. Mm. Ah, Ketis. Ketis, can you read? Ah, ah, ah Ketis, yeah. From 23 to 26. Uh, can I ask someone else to read if that's okay? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Mike, please can you read for me? All right, it's fine. Uh, Absalom, can you read from verse 23 to 26? Absalom has never said anything. It's okay, kids, it's fine. Absalom, can you read from verse 23 to 26? I can read, Simba. You can go in, yeah. So it's Leviticus 26, right? Uh, it's 23 to 26. Okay. And if ye will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then I also uh, walk, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I'll bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I'll send the pestilence and among you I'll send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. This one I'm going to ask you to Kachka. I've never said anything. I've never asked Kachka. Kachka, I saw Kachka. Is she still there? Oh, she's not. All right. Natalie? Uh, Jehoiya. Uh, Chin. 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 I'm on my phone and I'm computer. Phone and computer. It's echoing. Echoing. Jehoiachin. Yeah, that is correct. That is Jehoiachin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is the time of Jehoiachin. Can you give me the reason why? Or someone? Quickly. Leon? Leon, or Debra, I can't remember that part. Sorry, it's fine. No worries. Sidley, mm, Richard. Was he the king that um, that was reinstated? And if he was faithful, many of the Babylonians would have um, converted. Or was that another? That's another one. I'm not quite sure. 
Um, but he rebelled after three years. All right. If that's the right one, I'm not quite sure. All right. Uh, blessing? Do you have something to say? Uh, no, I don't have anything to say. Right Ignatius? Now. Ignatius? Emma? Hello? Hello? Hello, Simba. I think I got lost. I only heard my name. Is it a question? It's a question. Why are we saying George is based on the basis that we have? Okay. You 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 want us to apply the heat? Why are we saying this is the time of George? We got the answer from we got the answer from from Natalie. Now, one the reason why. Okay, we want why we are saying it's Joachim. Exactly. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, all right. I, I think let me think if I if I do get an answer then I'll I'll come back. All right, it's fine. What about Emma or Marsha? Uh I can't I knew you were gonna ask me. I don't um I don't remember why he I think he is the king that Reigns for three months and gets taken. I, he's after Jehoiakim. That's why. That's the only logic I've got for you. Sorry. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why. Yeah. It's Curtis. It's Curtis, right? Right. Let me look at the chat. And can I give you also time check? Ten minutes. How many minutes left? Oh. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. All right. All right. Reformation. Reformation? No, that wasn't Joachim. <laughs> Joachim, okay, are you talking about, okay, let me try. I don't know if it's the correct one. Um, there's uh, the point, I think it's verse 25 that speaks about avenging the quarrel of my covenant. <laughs> I don't know if I'm applying it correctly. But uh, during the time that Joachim reigned, I think he must have reigned for like three months, if I'm not mistaken. In that same year, mm -hmm. there was disputes, I think, for getting, I think there was a lot of fighting over who would become king, things like that. Uh -huh. And uh, there were a few kings that reigned in that same year, and they all had a short period of time of reigning. So I'm not sure if, if that, that applies. Do you still remember the siege of Jerusalem? No, I think most details are skipping my mind. <laughs> All right. So, in the siege of Jerusalem, I think it will be done as a homework so that people at least will have some time to go back to the Bible. In as much as we are looking for what is happening in America, whereby Trump is trying to get into power, we also need to go back to the Bible and uh, refresh and recall some of these uh, <laughs> chapters, because it seems like people are forgetting, right? <laughs> oh, Katie is saying Josiah. <laughs> it's fine. L let us move on to verse 27 so that we can end our study in time. Uh, Zedekiah. <laughs> yeah, Zedekiah was the last king, wasn't he? Yeah, he's the last king. We, we have Zedekiah. I know it's 28, but 27, 28. Yeah, his eyes took out. That is Zedekiah. And we know what Zedekiah did, right? He forgot. He forgot. He forgot. This, was the, this was the, you can, you can now safely say this was the hardest captivity. I think you can agree with me. This was the hardest captivity. We know what happened to Zedekiah after he was warned, warned by Jeremiah, but he did not listen up until uh, he was it was so miserable in the land of in the land of uh, of the Israelites. What uh, what happened during that time? So 
these are the seven terms that we have. This is the 47 times. So Leviticus chapter 26, this is the immediate context of Leviticus chapter 26. But as a movement now, we managed to come up with the issue of 25 to 20. But when Moses was writing Leviticus chapter 26, when he was talking about the seven times, he was not referring to the he was not referring to the 25 to 20. We as a movement, we are the ones we managed to come up with an application of the 25 to 20. But in the mind of Moses, there was no 25 to 20 in his mind. So what we managed to come up with as a movement, this is what we 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 have done. So we are now saying we have the 25 20, whereby, like what Sid tried to, to say when we just started the lesson, as a movement, we are saying we have the seven times. Remember, we say a time is equivalent to one year, of which in the Bible we are saying a year is equivalent to 360 watts. 360 days, right? So at the end of the day, if we are saying we have seven times, we have seven times, if a year is equivalent to 360 days, so we end up saying 360 multiplied by seven, then we end up with 25, 20. This is how we managed to come up with the aspect of 25 20. But in the mind of Moses, he was not thinking about the 25 20. We are the ones who come up with the issue of what? 25 20. 25 20 again, we also use Daniel chapter 5, verse 5, where we have many, many. Take care. Over sin. Whereby, if we are to convert men into people's monthly value, men is equivalent to 25 shekels. And Ufasin is half of what? Men is not 25, sorry, sorry. It's men is 50, sorry. It's 50. <clears throat> and Ufasin is half of a shekel, which is 25, then a shekel is one. So if we add, we end up with what? 126. This is where the number 126 came from. This is the reason why we say 126, 126, 120, 120, 120, 120, 120, 120, 120, 120, one year is equal to one, a year is equal to a day, a day is equal to a year, so we have 126. Then we can put uh, this 126 shekels into grams according to Ezekiel chapter 45, which will be verse 12. Let me check to verify. All right, verse 5, verse 45, verse 12. So if we are to convert, 126 shekels to gallons. Demma, can you move, move your camera so you can see the board? Thanks. People are to go to the gallons. Still can't see. Can you see? You need to move it to the left. The other way. It's best to move your laptop. Be easier to the right. Thank you. Sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry about that. All right. So if we are to put 126 circles into balance, remember, 
according to Ezekiel chapter 45, verse 12, it says one shekel is equivalent to 20 gerams. So if we have 126 shekels, if we are to convert 126 shekels into gerams, we will have 25 to 20 gerams. Where is this coming from? We simply say 126 multiplied by by 20. We'll get 25 what? We'll get 25 to 20. Then another aspect, men can also be converted to sikiste shtekos, right? Many, many shekel, shekel still remains as one shekel, right? Then ufasin is half of a shekel, which becomes 30. So if we say 60 plus 60, 120 plus 30, 150 plus 1, 151. So at the end of the day, as a movement, we ended up with the numbers such as 126 and 151. And we use these numbers to come up with the present truth of what is taking place in our time. Right now, as the 144,000, as we are approaching the Sunday law, in order for us to be able to come up with the nature of the Sunday law as a movement, how the Sunday law is going to, to look like, it all emanated from the fact that we used this number, number 126. Remember we said 1888, Remember, 1888 is the Sunday law. So if we are to add 126 from, one, from 1888, we will arrive in 2014. And the 2014 becomes, becomes the Sunday law of the priest. And it is the one which helps us to be able to come up with the nature of the Sunday law, how the Sunday law is going to look like. We should go back to 2014 so that you will be able to see how the Sunday law is going to look like as the hundred and forty-four thousand as we are approaching the Sunday law. As we are approaching the Sunday law. We are standing here, it's the hundred and forty-four thousand. So if you want to understand the nature of the Sunday law. You can go back to 2014. But how did we arrive to 2014? We used the number 126. Where is this number 126 coming from? It is coming from the aspect of the 25 watt trend. But Leviticus chapter 26, when Moses is writing, is not talking about the 25 trend. Moses is referring to the time whereby the Israelite is going to face the consequences of disobeying what? Of disobeying God. That, that is what Moses is, is illustrating and prophesying to the Israelites. But we need to thank God because of this movement. Because God has managed to pave a way so that at the end of the day, as the people who are living in the last generation, we have managed to come up with some of these truths which will give us hope for our future, which shows that God cares for us through his servants that he gave us. We are, we are now able to, 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 to encounter the Sunday law when we are in position of knowing how it looks like. I think that is what... Now, so I was saying, when Moses was writing Leviticus chapter 26, Moses doesn't have 25 to 20 in his mind. What he is narrating is prophesying about what is going to happen to the Israelites in the event that they obey God, they are going to have blessings. In the event that they disobey God, which is very unfortunate, which happens, this is what is going to happen to them. This is the reason why we have those four, seven times. This is the reason why we have those time of judges where they were being persecuted and oppressed by this nation surrounds them. So I was saying as a movement, we need to thank God because we managed to come up 
with these ideas whereby we have the 25 20, which is the one that we are using. I was saying, as the hundred and forty four thousand, we are approaching the Sunday law. Let's thank God back that as we are approaching the Sunday law, we are now aware of the nature of the Sunday law. All that comes from the 25 20 because 2014 is the Sunday law of the priest. So in order for us to be able to understand the Sunday law, we are supposed to look at the 2014, which was the Sunday law of the priest. And that helped us to be able to be in a better position to know the nature of the Sunday law, number one. Number two, how did we arrive at 2014? That is when we used 126, which is the what? Which is the 25 20. But where is it coming from? It is coming from Leviticus chapter 26. But if we are to argue with someone maybe from the main conference church, we can't argue that seven times is Moses is referring to the 25 20. That would be a lie. Moses is not referring to the 25 20. Moses is referring to the immediate context of the history of the Israelites during that time. I think we need to clear out that. So this is the main focus of this study. It was there to highlight the immediate context of Leviticus chapter 26, especially if we have an opportunity maybe to share with our, uh, with our, with the Levites in the event that you made them. I think this is a better way or of approaching these studies with them, if you are sharing with them in the event that maybe you encounter one of them. I think this is what uh, I have for today. This is the end of our lesson for today. Thank you very much. Any questions, questions or contributions before we pray? Okay, Simba. Uh, question. Yeah, maybe we're going to discuss this on the side, but um, I just want to say it to everyone else. Perhaps they can put an interest in that. The issue of those coins, um, the issue of the coins and the cross rates that you are doing there. Um, I remember I used to fight a lot uh, with somebody teaching me that, telling me that. Um, then convert some coins to shekels, and then, okay, the shekels is under, understandable, but now converting to to, to Gera, it, 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 it really needs to be ironed out as to why you have to do the cross rate. Like you are taking the British pound, you say the pound in, to the US is so much thing. You come up with a certain truth. Maybe not for today, but maybe some other time. We need a little to iron out why we are taking those money, you know, um, comparing them to currencies in, of another currency and coming up with those figures. Yeah. We'll talk on the sides, but if it's just a thought for everyone to say maybe you want to iron that out in your understanding. Anyone else? Simba, I just had a quick question. I want to, I don't know if it's quick actually, but a quick question about when you presented the different time seven times and said we applied them to certain histories and you've made it clear that Moses isn't referring to seven times as we know it. Do you think He's not even referring to seven years, literal years, is he? So when he says, well, I don't think so, I'm not sure. I know there are seven year periods that we could see for some parts of scripture to do with kings and to do with Gideon. There's a seven year time of the Midianites. I don't know if we could use that and say seven more is, is but I think it, it falls apart if you say it's seven literal years. So is, is it your understanding that that seven times just means this is an increasing punishment and seven times is just a phrase saying much more? I, I think the, the the way I'm suggesting that, the way I'm looking at it, it's intensity. It's not referring to the literal years. That is, it, it's intensity that Moses is alluding to. Yeah. It's intensity because as you can see, the, 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 the punishment is a growing bigger and bigger and bigger. If you look at the punishment 
when it started in the time of the judges is totally different from what happened to uh, to to Manasse. From Manasse, you move on to Joy. What what is what is taking place? There's intensity. And, and you, you were relating soft captivity and hard captivity, and you you made that distinction because you were associating hard captivity with the seven times intensity. Exactly, exactly, okay. yeah, exactly. Okay, thanks. Any questions before we pray? I think if we don't have any questions. Yes, is this I don't know if you are going to have another study on this because I still have some things that haven't been ironed out in, in connection with hard and soft captivity and the, the proper distinction between them. So I guess we won't be able to answer that now. So I hope you will continue one of these days. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. Because I'm worried about time. I have strange people. I am sorry about that. Mm, I think I can kneel and pray. Let us pray. Dear God who is in heaven, we want to thank you for giving us this precious and wonderful time whereby we discuss about the heavenly things. May you bless each and every one of us. At the end of the day, what we need, Lord, is to be saved. Be with us, do not leave us alone. Help us, Lord, to be alert as the time is drawing near. Help us to soldier on. Help us to be able to conquer in this great controversy that we are fighting in. Help us to be able to stand on your side. Bless each and every one of us. May even place the leaders of this movement. We pray in Jesus Christ. This is our prayer. Amen.